The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, and to whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, who deceive thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love fulfills the law. May we love you with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength. And may we love our neighbor as ourselves, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you please be seated for the proclamation of the word. A reading from 2 Samuel. After the death of Saul, when David had returned from defeating the Amalekites, David remained two days in Ziklag. David intoned this lamentation over Saul and his son Jonathan. He ordered that the song of the bow be taught to the people of Judah. It is written in the book of Joshua. He said, Your glory, O Israel, lies slain upon high places. How the mighty have fallen. Tell it not in Gath. Proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, or the daughters of the, of the Philistines will rejoice. The daughters of the uncircumcised will exult. You mountains of Gilbo, let there be no dew or rain upon you, nor bounteous fields. For there, for there the shield of the mighty was defiled, the shield of Saul, anointed with oil no more. From the, slip, from the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, nor the sword of Saul return empty. Saul and Jonathan, beloved and lovely, in life and in death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you with crimson in luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. Jonathan lies slain upon the high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. Greatly beloved were you to me. Your love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war perished. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, Lord, if you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning. More than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, more without end. Amen. Would you please stand? The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. 
mind. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed again the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet, and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him, and a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for twelve years. She had endured much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus, and came up behind him in the crowd, and touched his cloak. For she said, If I but touch his clothes, I will be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about to the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling, fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Don, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means... Little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was twelve years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this, and told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. So for weeks, uh, for the last few weeks, I should say, we have been confronted by the painful truth of our racist past and racist present. To hear this week of hundreds more unmarked residential school graves is certainly not surprising. We know that's happening, but it is still incredibly troubling, incredibly sobering, and incredibly painful. To hear that, that though the residential schools are gone, indigenous people are still dying because of the, the circumstances of their life, and there, there is just equally distressing, and frustrating, and tragic. Their lives are unsafe because of polluted water, inadequate housing, limited health care and mental health support, and inferior educational opportunities. And that's all caused by that systemic apathy towards their health and well-being. We have heard for decades about the residential school system and its ongoing effect on the lives of those who attended and their descendants. We've heard for decades about the problems faced by indigenous people in our country. That, and, and problems that are, are faced by them, but not by, by others in the population. We've heard for decades that there is a massive problem and people are dying. We can't say we didn't know. We can't say we hadn't heard. We can't say that this is, is news. The truth is that we have known for a very long time. And we've chosen not to respond. We've turned a deaf ear, we've closed our eyes, we've pretended that progress was being made, we've deceived ourselves. Now, 
before we go any farther, please do not hear me saying all this from some enlightened high ground that I occupy. I don't get to claim any high ground here because I am absolutely as deeply implicated in this as anyone else. As a society, we failed in the past and we are continuing to fail now. Massive and important things need to change so that everyone that lives in this land can live abundantly the way that Christ intended. It's not good enough for us to, to wallow in guilt. Change needs to happen. But that's where we sort of lose the thread of this thing. We don't know what to do. We don't know how to proceed. We don't know how to live so that those other members of the human family can live too. It feels like an impossible situation. Now, impossible exactly describes the situation that was faced by Jairus, the leader of the synagogue from our gospel reading. His daughter was sick. He had the doctors come to, to take care of her. He had the priest pray for her. He and his wife had, had attended to her as best they could. They did everything possible, but she wasn't getting any better. In fact, she was getting worse. Jairus was at his wit's end when he heard that Jesus, that well-known healer, was in town. He left the house and he headed down to the edge of the lake. He ran into the crowd soon after leaving the house and, and started making his way through. Because of the role that he had in the community, there was a great deal of respect for him. And so he was able to move through the crowd. And as he did that, people just automatically got out of his way. He moved through that crowd like a prow of a ship through the water. They parted left and right, allowing him to head straight to the center of the front where Jesus was. Jesus saw him come and waited patiently for him. Darius didn't stop until he was right in front of Jesus. And then even though he was an important man and an important person in the community, he fell down at Jesus' feet, begging him to help his daughter. Jesus agreed and started to follow Jairus. As Jesus stepped away, another person with an impossible problem reached out and touched the hem of, of Jesus' clothes. This woman had been dealing with a hammer for more than 12 years. 12 years, which meant that it was 12 years of isolation, 12 years of, of weakness, 12 years of an impossibly difficult existence. I'm sure it seemed impossible that this could end for her, but she was willing to try. And with only that touch, the impossible happened, and her life was restored to her. Jesus stopped, and after a brief interchange, he said to her, Donna, your faith has made you well. Go in peace, and be healed of your disease. And just as he finished saying that, that's when those messengers the really dreaded messengers came from Jairus' house, and they spoke quietly to him. They said, your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? I imagine Jairus' shoulders slumped. His face went pale, and he hung his head in profound grief. The situation had just gotten even more impossible. It was over. And Jairus was crushed. Jesus overheard this, this interaction and said to Jairus, Do not fear, but believe. I don't imagine that Jesus' words really helped. I mean, it certainly wouldn't have helped me at all. But Jairus led Jesus to the house anyway. Once there, Jesus kicked the mourners out because their services were no longer necessary. And he went to the little girl with her mother and father in tow, and he leaned down, took her hand, and said, Talitha kum. It means little girl, get up. And immediately the impossible happened. The little girl got up and walked away from her deathbed. We are, as I said, living in kind of an impossible situation. We are sick and dying as a, as a community because our siblings in the human family are sick and dying. The only hope is Jesus. And thank God he's here. He's in our community. 
He's in our church. He's in our hearts. Jesus is here. And so we can reach out to Jesus and ask Him to do the impossible and save us and help us truly live. I'm reading a, a, a new book now called uh, Decolonizing Christianity. It's written by an American Baptist professor, Miguel de la Torre. In an interview related to that book, the interviewer asked him what people in the wider society, uh, people like us, what we needed to do to appropriately respond to historic and current racism. And his response to that was, they need to get saved. That is, we need to have Jesus change our hearts and our minds and our lives so that we live according to his teachings. So that we feed people who are hungry. We give clothing to those who have nothing to wear. We get clean drinking water to people who are thirsty even in remote places. We welcome those who are different. We make sure there's doctors and nurses and equipment and clinics to, to treat anybody that's sick. We care about people that are, that are in both literal and figurative prisons, even those who are guilty. The answer to our impossible situation, trying to figure out what to do and how to proceed, is exactly the life that Jesus called his followers to lead. It's already written down in the New Testament for us. We need Jesus to save us by giving us the desire and the will to live the way that he taught us. He's here right now. Let's beg him to do the impossible and save us. And I know what he'll do. He will grab our hand and he will say, Talitha Kum, get up. Get up, speak up, act up. Lead the new life that Jesus gives and bring it to the sick and those who are dying so they can get up and walk away from their death. And we can all live and live abundant to the glory of God. Thanks be to God. Lord, have mercy. 
for Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this community of St. Clair Beach, for Tecumseh, Windsor, and all of Essex County, for every city and community, and for those who live and live in faith, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For good weather, and for abundant harvests for all to share, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who travel by land, water, or air, for the sick and the suffering, remembering especially John, Norm, Burl, Jan, Walter, Bill, Lillian, Eric, Mark, Janet, Ed, Karen, Scott Hander, Susan, Marge, Art, Phyllis, Mike, Mary, Matthew, Anita, Chantel, Carol, Jen, Brian, Bob, Michelle, Larry, and Daniel. For prisoners and captives, for those who suffer as a result of poverty and natural disaster, for the safety, health, and salvation of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died, we remember especially Steve Robshaw. And for all who mourn, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering St. Mark and all the saints, we commit ourselves, one another, and our whole life to Christ our God. To Thee, O Lord. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto Thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in Thy name, Thou wilt hear the requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of Thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of Thy truth, and in the world to come life everlasting. For Thou, Father, art good and loving, and we glorify Thee through Thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ said unto all the truly turned in. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all who believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is the true saying, and worthy of all to be received that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father Jesus Christ, the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all of its past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all men, that with hearts of repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, heart, and deliver you from all your sins, 
confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand? My brothers and sisters in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Have a seat for a second for some announcements. Uh, just a couple of things I want to mention. Um, first, uh, today is the uh, miracle, uh, June 27th miracle food drive. And so uh, everybody was, uh, has been asked to put some food out on the front porch. It will be uh, picked up by volunteers and, uh, and taken off to uh, uh, storage and, uh, and sorting areas. Uh, so in, in town here, uh, they are taking it over to Lakeshore St. Andrews. So they, they came here last year, but uh, they're uh, opted for that. Uh, we did volunteer, um, and uh, they, uh, they chose, that, chose to go that direction. So um, that said, please, uh, if you can, uh, make sure that that food is out, and uh, folks have an opportunity to pick it up, and they, they're going to start picking stuff up about noon. So um, that would be wonderful. Um, on top of that, uh, at, at, at the very least, I will be over at Lake Shore St. Andrews from 4 till 5.30, helping with their, uh, their sorting thing. Um, and uh, if you, you know, have a desire for a uh, sore back or something like that, join me. Um, <laughs> Schlepping fans and, uh, and all the rest um, from 4 till, till 5 to okay? Um, this, uh, this week we have a uh, normal uh, sort of functioning life as usual. Uh, we have our midweek service, uh, but Thursday, of course, is Canada Day. And uh, so there is no Bible study on Thursday, and there won't be the week after that either, because I will be on holidays for, for, uh, from Thursday till the two Wednesdays later. Um, Jack will be covering in-person services, and uh, I am pre-recording the, uh, the online services so that, uh, so that that can get out and uh, nobody has to worry about uploading and my passwords and all that kind of junk. Um, so, uh, so I'm just, uh, just going to take care of it in advance, and, uh, and we'll, we'll get out there. But uh, we're, uh, we're off for, uh, for two weeks, and then, uh, then I'll be back, and then we'll be, uh, as I said, I'm really, really hoping that we will be sort of in a, in a more normal functioning uh, uh, reality for the life of the church. So once, uh, once we hit that 25%, we can, uh, we can go back to 50 people in church at, at the 1030 service, and we just do all of our business in here without the uh, schlepping stuff out back and, uh, and all the rest. So, so we're looking forward to that. But in the meantime, Jack's going to take care of everything for the next couple of uh, uh, next couple of Sundays. The midweek services uh, through the time I'm off will just be canceled. So this Wednesday will be the last one, and then uh, it won't come again for three weeks. All right. Um, I am delighted to tell you that uh, that I will. Uh, I'm, I got my appointment for my uh, my second job tomorrow, so that's uh, that's good news. And uh, and I know a lot of you have, uh, have are in the same boat or, or farther along. So uh, so thank you for, for doing that. If you haven't done it yet, then please make uh, please consider doing it. It's a, it's important. It's a great way for us to just look after each other as well as our own health, which is also good. Um, so uh, and uh, it's uh, it's especially helpful for. Uh, little boobers like Rebecca who can't uh, who can't get their vaccine yet, and uh, I'm getting a death square from the back corner. But, you know. <laughs> I might end up smothered with a pillow at some point, but uh, you know, don't think too much of it. It'd probably be a church that does me before Rebecca ever does. Anyways, <laughs> that I think is uh, is all I have to share. If there oh sorry if there are any 
that touch for emergencies in that time that way, please be in touch with one of the wardens or with the church office and they'll make sure that, uh, that um, you're appropriately cared for and, uh, and all the rest, okay? That's all I got for you. Why don't we stand for a blessing and then we can uh, make our, our way out into the bright, fresh sun morning. Peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.